In this video, we'll level up your DTF game by converting a 72 DPI image into a 300 DPI graphic ready for DTF printing. Welcome back to the Transfer Superstars channel. We get artwork from businesses that are low resolution all the time. All it takes is a few extra minutes in Photoshop to get it from good to great. You wanna watch this to the end as we'll have Phil print these onto DTF transfers. We'll press them onto t-shirts and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison between the 72 DPI DTF print and the 300 DPI DTF print. Let's begin with the image I found on Vectezy.com. It's a five color image. Zooming in, you'll notice some artifacts. So going over to image, image size, you'll see that this is a 72 DPI web image. Let's trim away some of the excess white space by heading over to your menu, image, trim, select top left pixel color and check all four sides, then click OK. Now we'll resize the image by going to image, image resize. We'll increase the pixels from 72 to 300. We'll also decrease the height of the image since we'll be printing this on a t-shirt. Zooming into the logo, you can see the JPEG compression artifacts and that the lines are not as sharp as they could be and we'll fix them in the next couple of steps. Unlock the background layer. Let's create a duplicate. Rename the original to original. Let's rename the, the layer that we'll be working on. And hide the original layer. Control Shift U to desaturate this layer and let's zoom in. Now head over to your menu, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll adjust the radius. So let's reduce the radius to 0.1. And we're just moving around to look for a spot where you see perfect lines. And then increase the radius until you see that it's a smooth line. So you'll have to play with this for your logo. And this looks pretty good for us. Click OK. Now let's click on adjustment layers, curves, and we'll play with the tickers, both the black and the white. And what we're trying to do is create the most contrast that you can while maintaining clarity of all the lines. So that looks pretty good. Click OK. And then we'll merge the layers. So our logo is looking pretty good. Only thing we're missing is all the colors. Let's select the magic wand. Contiguous checked. Select mask and invert by pressing control i looks like i missed a few spots here so i'll individually select those by holding control and left click and then i'll fill that in the mask with the black to create the transparency now hide the top layer click on the original layer press b and hold alt and left click to grab the red color unhide the top layer select the top layer click on adjustment click on solid color click ok click on the mask and invert it by pressing ctrl i now click on your graphic layer we'll use the magic wand tool again and select the areas that are supposed to be red 
We'll click on the areas that are supposed to be red by pressing Control and left clicking. While we're on the red fill layer, we'll make sure we're on the mask and click Alt Backspace to fill it with the foreground color, which is currently set at white. Let's move on to our next color. Select the original layer, press B for brush, Alt left click to select the pink color, create a new fill layer, click OK. Click on the mask and invert the mask by pressing Ctrl I. Select our graphic layer. Now hold Ctrl and left click using the wand tool and select all the areas that are supposed to be pink. Now that we're done with our selection, go back to your pink layer and click on the mask. Apply the foreground color, which is white, to reveal the pink. We'll repeat this process for the remaining colors. Now let's group what we did. That way we can compare with the original file. As we zoom in here, you can see the artifacts on the original file. And as we toggle, you'll see that all of the artifacts have disappeared. So again here, you can see that the artifacts are no longer there. Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil over here at Transfer Superstars. If you guys have been following along on this tutorial, we've taken a 72 DPI web image and converted it into a high quality 300 DPI image. We went ahead and made the transfers. We're gonna go ahead and press on two t-shirts so we can show a side-by-side -side comparison between the two. Let's go ahead and get started with the heat pressing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. We'll start with the 72 DPI image. As you can see, it's a bit blurry. It's not as sharp. The lines are less defined. The edges are jagged. And the solid areas have less consistent colors. There's JPEG artifacts from taking it off the website. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the 300 DPI image. Now with the 300 DPI image, it's retail quality. The lines are defined. They're solid all around. The fonts are clear, they're not fuzzy, solid and consistent colors all around. We definitely have a clear winner here. The 300 DPI is definitely the way to go if you're looking to up your game. Be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and you guys can also check us out on TikTok or Instagram. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and I'll catch you guys on the next video.